Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, because only the Holy Spirit and nobody else, nobody else, secular information cannot change a person's life. However, the information from the Word of God, the content from the Word of God, the Holy Scripture, is what will give the direction, the instruction, so that we human beings may opt or choose between doing the will of God or doing our own will, to serve God or to serve ourselves. When God made Adam and Eve, He made them perfect to live in perfection, in perfect harmony with Him. But in order for this marriage, this matrimony to actually work, then man had to obey the voice of God, the Word of God. When man disobeys the Word of God, then they will suffer, they will certainly suffer. As certain as God lives, human beings will suffer when they turn their back on the Word of God. Because the Word of God, dear friend, is God speaking with each of us. When you read the Bible, God is speaking to you. Isn't this wonderful? God is speaking to us. Now, of course, it's obvious that when a person gets the Bible to read, but they are not interested in knowing what God wants from them, just interested in knowing what they want from God, then things change. And this is the greatest problem with people, the greatest problem. And I say people who have faith, no doubt that they have faith, but it's a faith that is selfish. It's a faith, let's say, that is self-centered, where the person is only thinking of themselves. They want to know what they can receive. It's like the Jews. You know that the Jews are like that. When they deal with other people, they want to know what they can extract from that other person. It's human beings in general. What they can possess or, or take from, from that person that they are talking to. I remember that a Jew said to us one day, listen, why do you want to help us? This is the question he asked. What, what is your part in it? What do you want in return? So, when the person goes and reads the Bible, thinking like this, with this obsession, this focus, then what can God do for them? Isn't it? So, when God created Adam and Eve, He created them to live eternally in a perfect way. It's very nice. He didn't create them to be imperfect and ill with sicknesses, to live in lies and deceit that they needed to lie. They wouldn't have to deceive or lie, nothing like that, because the figure of death didn't exist. Because the Lord of Adam and Eve was God himself. 
And he was so close to them that he would come to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. He would come down from his throne, would come to the earth, and would walk with Adam and Eve. However, when Adam and Eve broke that unity, they broke that symphony, that harmony, Meaning, how did they break it? When they disobeyed the word of God, which is the case, for example, why divorce exists and, and separation, relationships that are messy and broken, and all sort of disgrace which happens in the families all over the world nowadays. Why is it? It's because... Someone in that relationship broke the promise to the other, whether the man to the woman or the woman to the man, or better, whether the husband towards the wife or the wife towards the husband. On the altar, in the wedding day, there was exchange of words. One pledged their word to the other, to be faithful, to love them in sickness and, and health and for richer or for poorer, and all the cheap talk that we already know quite well. But they didn't actually mean anything. So, with God, it's not like that, dear friend. God doesn't work this way. God works with the word. God pledged His word. And when a person pledges their word to Him, they make a vow, as they say in Spanish, they aferra their word. It's a very nice verb, which means, in other words, to be bound to God. When a person becomes one, bound by iron, and only the Holy Spirit can do that. They become one in the Spirit with God. That's what Paul said, and we've been saying here. But he who is joined to the Lord, actually, he who is joined to the Lord, it's marriage, matrimony, is one Spirit with him. When God made Adam, he also made Eve and said it's not good that man would be alone. Then he made Eve. So both of them were one through marriage and the, the relationship between man and woman. So they were doing really well, really well. However, when they rebelled against God, when they disobeyed the word of God. Listen, don't touch that tree because that's mine. It's my property. You can eat from whatever you want. All the garden is available to you. But that tree is mine. That's my portion. It's mine. Which are the first fruits. That tree of knowledge of good and evil was the first fruit of God. So they touched, meaning they disobeyed, they rebelled against the word of God. And that's what happens nowadays. It's pointless for you to belong to a church, for you to be an assistant, a pastor, a bishop, a priest, an archbishop, the pope, or whoever you want to be. But if you don't obey the word of God, you are a servant, a servant of the devil. Because whoever doesn't obey the word of God serves the devil. Those who obey the word of God serve God. How do I know that I believe in God? When I believe in His Word, how do I know that I believe in the Word of God? When I base, when I lead my life according to the Word of God, that's how I show that I believe in God. So to believe is not a philosophy. 
It's not an ideology or a feeling. It's nothing to do with feelings. It has to do with obedience. And the same thing is marriage. When Esther and I got married, we pledged our word to one another. And in, in pledging our word, we then were glued together. We were bound together to one another. She doesn't live without me and I don't live without her. It means that we built a home, a family. And then the children come from this family with the image of ours, with the image of Esther and, and mine. And that's what God did. He created Adam and Eve with his image. And in order for there not to be what we see in this world today, which is the disaster and corruption and lie and deceit, God, as well as Adam and Eve, both parties had to be in syntony. So, of course, he, the Creator, wanted to be our, let's say, our husband, our husband, and we would be his bride, which is a symbolism, a representation of the Church of the Lord Jesus. The Church of the Lord Jesus is not the denomination A, B, or C. No. The Church of the Lord Jesus is formed by people who are part, who are members of the body of the Lord Jesus, not of the body of an institution, the physical church, but the spiritual church. In the spiritual church, those who are of God are part of the body of the Lord Jesus. The body of the Lord Jesus. Why? because they are one with him. And that's why we read here that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So whoever, whoever is inserted in this spiritual body, which is invisible, then they return to that state that Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Innocence. They live in communion with God. So those who are in the body of the Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter the circumstances, the difficulties, the problems. It doesn't matter. Just like Job. Job is a classic example of that. It didn't matter anything he went through. He lost all his children in one day. He lost everything, even his health. He lost absolutely everything. He was left with nothing. But he remained firm in his covenant with God. Why? Because he believed in God in a practical way, regardless of the circumstances. And that's what God requires from us. And Job is an example, a perfect example of this. Of course, Jesus, it's not even to be compared, but Job didn't have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Actually, Job didn't even know God. He said, you know, I only heard about you, but now my eyes can see you after he went through all those hardships and difficulties. So God is seeking for people like these who have the character of Daniel, the character of Job, the character of Noah, righteous, walk in righteousness, the character of Abraham, and so on and so forth so that then he can marry with these people and turn them into his dwelling place. Can you imagine that? You receiving the Holy Spirit. When a person receives the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God's seal. It's like a covenant. You know, when 
when people see me with my, my ring, my wedding ring, they know I am married, that I am committed to someone, that I belong to someone, and no one can have me, no one can take me. That's how the devil sees those who are of God, those who have the seal of the Holy Spirit, they have the mark of the Holy Spirit. It's the mark of Jesus himself in them. So when the devil sees me, he looks at me and he feels like killing me, like suffocating me to death. But in order for him to do that, he has to go over the dead body of Jesus. But there is no dead body because Jesus resurrected, so the devil cannot do anything. And that's why there in John, John said that whoever is of God, the devil cannot touch them. The devil cannot touch them. Why? Because God is one with them. He is one with God. They are one spirit with God. So then Paul asks that question. He asks, can I then take my body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and be joined to a harlot? to a prostitute or to anyone outside marriage. No, no, I can't, no way. So our body is sanctified by the blood of Jesus and because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in it. Now, when the person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, obviously the devil can touch them. Obviously, the devil is able to do what he did to Job, but he did it with God's permission. So God, dear friend, created human beings to establish his kingdom here on earth. However, People didn't want to obey the word of God. They do not want to obey his word. People want the blessings, but they don't want to submit to the word of God. So, some people say, Oh, Bishop, but it's very hard. It's difficult. My flesh is weak. I know that the flesh is weak, but you will never, and I will never, we will never be tempted beyond what we can withstand and resist. God gave us resistance to resist our flesh, to resist the devil, to resist the offers of the world. He gave us it. But it's up to each of us to say either yes or no. If we say yes to the devil or to sin, we are going to be leaving God's domain and serving sin and the devil. So the devil will have rights over our lives and body. This is it. If we say no to sin, then we are going to be saying yes to what is right and perfect. So God will honor us. Those who honor, I will honor. And those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. So who does it depend on? It depends on each of us. It doesn't depend on God. It depends on each one of us, on our mind, our decision. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to have a nice profession that is promising, then you have to go to uni, you have to study, you have to absorb the information of this world, the info that is given to you at uni. However, if you know, if you have the information, but you do not practice, then you are going to be a horrible doctor, a horrible dentist, a really bad solicitor. You may have a diploma. You may even have a ring. But, in reality, in practice, you are not a professional. For the world, you may be, but for yourself, you know that you are not. So, dear friend, God created man, and he is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the Lord. The Lord of whom, though? Of those who serve him. They serve him how? 
they serve him with their righteous, blameless life, giving to Caesar what is Caesar's, giving to God what is God's, doing what is right. This marriage, this matrimony, is what makes us one with the Lord. This is very nice. And I've seen this. Praise God. God has been doing this work in our midst in an extraordinary way. I believe that throughout this world, in all the churches as well, His servants in general. But I've seen this. We've seen people who came destroyed with a miserable life. There was no way out for them anymore. But Jesus accepted them, delivered them, healed, washed, purified them, and turned them into virgins. And then he married them. And then, in them, the Holy Spirit was penetrated, and they were transformed into one spirit with God. That's what he wants to do with you. He wants you to be the blessing itself, and not one who seeks a blessing, but that you will be the blessing itself. That's what Jesus promised. He said, whoever drinks the water I shall give him, referring to the Holy Spirit. This water, meaning the Holy Spirit, will make in them a fountain of living water, springing up into everlasting life. That's what God wants to do with you, dear friend. That's what he wants. Nobody wants, desires to do this more than him. He wants to do this in your life more than you actually want. But you have to decide this here in your head because if you depend on your feelings and your heart, then it will never be done in your life. It depends on your mind only, your decision, your internal decision in your mind. I want it. That's what I want and that's it. And no one can stop me from doing this because the right to choose is a power, is an authority God gave to each of us. It's what he gave to Adam and Eve. He said, listen, all of this garden is mine. Everything is mine. But I give it to you. I give. You can use it as much as you want. But that tree there, do you see? That one is mine. It's my personal property. Don't touch it. Because the day that you touch it, you die. And that's exactly what happened. And that's why death came into existence. The devil took advantage and is been doing whatever he wants in the lives of those who don't believe. And those who are seeking their own desires and to satisfy their own flesh. Dear friend, your life only depends on your mind. You have the information. Every day we are here giving information. Every day, every single day. Testimonies. Every day we have a testimony. And praise God. God is showing not only His Word and teaching His Word, but He is showing with facts the testimonies. They are there in order to show to people, to everyone, that God is the same, that He was, is, and will always be the same in the lives of those who believe in Him with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their strength. It's yes or no. Marriage is body to body, soul to soul, spirit to spirit, or better, spirit with spirit first, soul with soul, and then body with body. It's all for all. That's what God does to us. That's it. He who is joined to the Lord is one, one spirit with Him. God is unique, and whoever is joined to Him becomes unique with Him. May God bless you all, and I will see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. And today is Wednesday. We are going to have the Lord's Supper. Whenever we eat of the bread, we participate in the bread, the symbol of the flesh of Jesus. When we take part of the wine, which is the symbol of the blood of Jesus, we are taking part in the same body, the same blood. And that's why Jesus took one bread and broke it. And he said, this is my body. I, I share myself. It's my blood which I share with you.
which means that the body of Jesus, let's say, symbolized by the bread and the wine, gives life to his church, to those who are part of his body. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. May God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.